Okay, so good morning to everybody. Welcome in Trieste. And um, today I'm going to give you a very uh, basic introduction on uh, the principle of uh, flow cytometry. Uh, I understand uh, you are, have a very uh, different uh, expertise. For some of you uh, is already expert in this field and perhaps will find uh, this presentation a bit boring. I uh, apologize if uh, <laughs> for some of you will be boring, but I hope that uh, most of you will find something uh, interesting. In any case, uh, um, if anything is not clear or if you need to have more uh, detail, feel free to, to ask me. Okay, so the title is uh, Fluidics, Optics and PMT Detectors, which are the basic components of uh, a of a, a flow uh, cytometer. We will treat uh, um, basic principles. What is, a flow, uh, what is flow cytometry? What is the technique, first of all? How a flow cytometer is made? Uh, it is uh, made of, uh, we can divide uh, the, uh, no, a, a, a cytometer in three subsystems, fluidics, uh, optics, mm -hmm. and uh, electronics. Then we will uh, have the seeing how a cytometer is made, we will uh, analyze the parameters that can be detected in, in the cytometer and how to visualize the data uh, by different plots and different type of visualization. And then we will give some uh, idea on uh, sorting. This will be um, a general introduction, then the single topics will be uh, further developed in the following uh, speech in the, during the course. So let's start. Flow cytometry. What is flow cytometry? It is a technology that measures and analyzes multiple characteristics of single cells or particles in liquid suspension. Uh, we can analyze, we can analyze uh, size, uh, internal complexity, and fluorescence uh, pattern. They must be in liquid suspension and pass through a beam of light. The um, instrument where we do the, this kind of analysis is called flow cytometer or FAX, which is the, an old acrostic for fluorescence activated cell sorter, which was the, the first uh, instrument that was uh, developed. Particles that can be analyzed range in uh, size from very small, from 0.2 micron up to 50 microns. So. Uh, from, from, the, from bacteria to large cells, uh, they can be analyzed. The important is that samples must be in liquid suspension and uh, therefore uh, cells from solid tissues must be very well disaggregated before analysis. This is an important point because uh, uh, aggregation is the, ma the, the major enemy of uh, uh, flow cytometric analysis. This is, therefore, it is something that must every time kept in mind when you prepare uh, your samples. And this will be one of the subjects of the, the practical part. Uh, possible usage. There are in, in a lot of possible usage. Of course, the most important ones are immunophenotyping, cell viability, cell proliferation, intracellular protein staining, but also you can apply this technique to gene expression, uh, cell cycle, uh, DNA analysis, um, also membrane protection, ion flux, a, a lot of different uh, possible applications. And of course, once you have identified uh, some population, you can actively sort them to isolate population from complex mixture. Now, uh, the very schematic of uh, flow cytometer is there is a, a, a tube containing the samples in, in suspension. They are brought by the, the fluidic system to the, the interrogation point to the cell where they intercept, the, the cells intercept a laser beam and they produce, uh, they scatter light or produce fluorescence that is then uh, detected by, by a detector and uh, uh, converted to digitized uh, digitized values that are uh, stored and uh, can be analyzed. Therefore, a flow cytometer is divided in three subsystems. The fluidics, which, as I said, brings the particles of interest to the interrogation point. 
way they interact with the excitation source. The optics subsystem consisted by the excitation sources, basically the lasers, and uh, uh, the component that collect the light signals and route them to the appropriate detectors. That is, uh, uh, mirrors, uh, lenses, uh, filters, uh, optical fibers, all the equipment that are required to send the, the, the light signal to the detectors. And the electronics, which is all the, the, the devices that convert the light signal to equivalent electronic signal. Therefore, the, uh, the, the, the photo detectors, the photo multiplier, which uh, uh, convert the light signal into uh, an electronic signal, and uh, then the, the, the software that will uh, elaborate this data. We, let's start analyzing the, the fluidic subsystem. Basically, the, the most common uh, system con consists of a, uh, everything is put in, in motion by a, a compressor, which uh, uh, create a, a, which uh, gives a pressure a, 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 to to the to the sample. The sample is drawn by uh, by air pressure to the uh, to the flow cell where it, it is uh, excited by the laser and then taken to the to the waste uh, the sample is injected into another fluid which is called the sheath fluid because it will wrap the the, the sample as a, as a sheet and will uh, move to to the waste other there are alternative fluidic systems which they make use of uh, a peristaltic pump, uh, of a peristaltic pump, which instead of using a compressor, which uh, use uh, compressed air, use a pump, uh, a pump that actively uh, takes the, the the sample, or other systems use injection pumps uh, with the syringes that. Uh, the, uh, collect the sample in uh, discrete uh, volumes and then inject into the, the fluidic stream. Uh, you will see in, in the instruments that we will, you will use in the, uh, during the course, we always use this uh, system that, I uh, know, the, 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 the fax via will use the peristaltic pump, in fact. So we also, you also see the... <laughs> A different uh, fluidic system, but most of them use the, the, the pressurized uh, system. Uh, comparison of this uh, uh, different system: the pressurized system uh, allows a continuous and constant flow rate. Uh, the only uh, we, is the, the best system for analysis. As a disadvantage, it makes it a bit more difficult uh, a, a, a determination of cell concentration. The system with peristaltic pump is the most uh, economic. It, is, uh, it allows continuous flow with, the, the, theoretically, we, the, the flow cannot be perfectly constant. But, uh, the, and uh, mm, the, the system with the injection pump aspirate the sample and inject, aspirate and inject, so the, the speed uh, of acquisition is constant, but uh, the, the flow is not always continuous. The main advantage of this system is that it allows an easy, an easy measurement of cell concentration. Um, whichever the system, whether it is, it is an injection pump or a pressurized system, the main principle of uh, flow cytometric analysis is the hydrodynamic focusing. That is, the sample core is maintained within the center of the sheet fluid. This is a, a transversal section of the, the, the counting chamber. This is the, the, the flow cell. The sample core is maintained uh, in a laminar flow inside the sheet fluid. This is obtained by giving differential pressure to the sheet fluid and the, the, the sample. The, the pressure of the sample is always higher than the pressure of the, the, the sheet fluid. Therefore, the, the sample is injected into the stream of sheet fluid and it stays in laminar flow. You don't have to expect, this is a very long path, it's just a few millimeters, but it, it stays, uh, the, the flow stays laminar in the, in the flow cell where 
it is excited by, by the lasers. And uh, the, uh, the pressure applied to the sample can be adjusted to increase or decrease the width of the sample core. Basically, if we, uh, if we increase the, the sample pressure, the, the, the sheath pressure stays constant all time. The sample pressure can be increased or decreased. If it is increased, the, the internal channel becomes wider. Therefore, uh, the, the narrower the, the, the sample core, the more precise are the, the definition of cells which stays uh, aligned. Uh, if we increase the, 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 the the sample pressure, if we increase the width of the sample core, we uh, obtain a, a high flow rate of events, but at, uh, there can be a decreasing resolution. Therefore, you, when you decide whether the, the, the flow rate to use, it always, you always have to try to stay at, at, as low as possible, unless you have a very uh, diluted sample. In that case, you have to increase the flow rate. But, uh, less uh, events in, in the counting chamber. Uh, this, I, this I show you because it, it is a technique that uh, it exists. We will not see it <coughs> now, but uh, just to let you know that it exists, this uh, um, a, a, an improvement to uh, allow a, a very precise uh, measurement of cells even at very high flow rate. That is acoustic focusing. Um, acoustic focusing uses uh, ultrasonic waves to keep cells collimating the center of the fluidic system. Therefore, uh, if, in, uh, as I showed before, by moving from uh, low pressure to high pressure, you have a, a, a scattering of cells. You have a, a larger number of cells per, per unity of time, but scatter then the, the precision of, of the reading can be reduced. If you apply um, acoustic focusing, you, could, um, you can collimate the, the cells in the center of, of the fluidic stream, if, even if it is large, and obtain a very precise uh, reading of uh, events at very high, uh, at very high flow rate. Um, this is an instrument that I saw just once, and it seems interesting, uh, is a, an improvement of, the, of this technique. Now, okay, so we have finished with the uh, fluidic system. We move now to the optic subsystem. Optic sub subsystem, which uh, includes, first of all, the lasers. They can be lasers of different wavelengths for the, the excitation light. Uh, lenses that uh, collimate the uh, mirrors and lenses that collimate the uh, laser beam into the uh, flow cell, and uh, a number of collection lenses of dichroic mirrors and filters to split the light in uh, different wavelengths. Uh, what are dichroic mirrors and bandpass filters? Uh, dichroic mirrors or dichroic filters are filters that uh, uh, split the light according to the wavelength. And for example, this is called a long pass uh, filter 500, means that uh, light with wavelength longer than 500 passes through and shorter wavelengths are reflected. Another kind of filter, the uh, short pass uh, filter uh, 500, means that the light with a wavelength shorter than 500 passes through and higher uh, wavelength are reflected. Band pass filters let pass only light of some uh, of a defined wavelength. For example, this is a band pass 550. It means that it is centered at 500 nanometers and that the window is 50 nanometers long. Therefore, this will let pass light from 475 to 525 nanometers. Light, uh, wavelengths that goes uh, uh, out of this range are just uh, reflected. Therefore, if we return to this scheme, we will see that we have a first dichroic mirror 
that let pass uh, shorter wavelengths and reflect the longer. Then another one, which split again the, the, the shorter and let pass the longer, and so on. If you see in a system of this kind, which is called the transmission optic, uh, transmission optic uh, the last detector, the light that reaches the last detector has to cross different uh, different filters. Therefore, there is a, a, a dispersion of the signal. There is a, a, a reduction of the signal intensity. This is a system that can be used when the number of uh, detectors is little and there are not, not many passages, but when in with more um, complex instrument with several detectors, this will result in a dispersion, um, in a progressive reduction of, of, the, of the signal. Therefore, more complex instrument of, uh, uses the reflection optics. And detectors are, the initial scheme is basically similar. There are, in, in this case, uh, the light instead of going in air is uh, drawn to the the interrogation point by means of uh, optical fibers to even uh, to reduce even more the light dispersion. Uh, light is collected by lens and drawn by again fiber optics to the detector's array, and the arrays are uh, organized with a, a system of decroit mirrors to uh, reduce the the dispersion of uh, of the light. For example, well these are the uh, arrays that you will see on the instruments that we are going to use. This is for the Pax Celesta and this is for the Pax Aria. And how it works. This is, for example, the scheme of the uh, detectors array on the 488 nanometer laser. Then for each laser, for each laser line, there will be a different uh, array of sets. What it happens here that is that the light arrives to the, the, the first, and it, it finds a decroic um, mirror with a, a long pass 735. This means that uh, long wavelength light, 700, more than 725, passes through, and it finds the first filter 780 that detects light in the far red uh, range. The far red light go to the detectors and the, the shorter wavelengths are reflected to the next one. They find a 655 long pass filter which let pass just the, the red light. And again, the, other, the, the shorter wavelengths are reflected to another which is a 610 and let pass orange light and the, other, and the, the shorter wavelength is reflected and again the other one is uh, 566 let uh, pass the, the yellow light and the last one for the green line finally the 488 which is the same wavelength of the of the exciting laser goes to the uh, detectors for the, the side scatter you see that in this way for each wavelength uh, has uh, to cross just one set of filters and uh, for, uh, also the the last uh, the, 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 the last wavelength to be detected has just been reflected with very uh, little uh, signal dispersion during the, the optical pass. And uh, fine. Now we are to the electronic system. Okay. After the, we have uh, uh, separated the light and send it to the appropriate detectors. Now, what are these detectors which actually detect the light? They are uh, elements, they are electronic devices, they represent the connection between the optic and the electronics, are uh, electronic devices that transform the inciting uh, light into uh, electric signals. Mm, they are mainly of two categories, uh, photodiodes and photomultipliers. Uh, photodiodes are the most uh, simple. Uh, they have uh, a low efficiency, generate a single electron per in incident photon, and they are used for stronger signals, typically the forward scatter. Uh, then we will uh, enter in more in detail what is a forward scatter and the side scatter. Uh, Why? More important, the photomultipliers generate an electronic cascade that can amplify the signals up to millions of times. 
um, photomultipliers collect uh, inciding photons. A, a voltage is applied to, uh, to the device and it is generated an electronic cascade which results in a very uh, high amplification of the signal. And this response is uh, depending on the applied voltage. Therefore, by uh, adjusting the voltage, you can increase or decrease the resulting signal. Uh, in fact, the, uh, increasing the voltage, a higher magnification of the response is obtained. If you imagine to have, for example, a, 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 signal, a, a signal distribution of this kind, you have a, a negative population and a positive population for a defined parameters. If you increase the voltage to the photomultiplier for this particular channel, you have an, in, an enhancement of the signal. So you, in, what you observe is that the signal moves on the uh, axis for, the, for, for the, this particular parameter. And if you increase too much, you will see that this population is, becomes the only, the only visible and the positive population is uh, goes to the end of the scale and is no longer visible. Therefore, when analyzing, uh, when, when setting the instrument for uh, acquisition of your data, uh, it is important to uh, adjust the voltage uh, applied to uh, the, the PMT to uh, get the best visualiz visualization of, uh, of your signal. And uh, now we, we see what happens when, uh, when a cell actually intercepts the, the laser. Um, when the cell intercepts the laser beam, a voltage pulse is generated. Uh, a pulse which has a height proportional to the signal intensity and the width depending on the time taken by the cell to cross the laser beam. So the, the cell arrives and First, makes first contact with the, the, the laser beam and it starts to give the pulse when it is, then the pulse reaches a maximum and then decreases by the end of time, by the, the, when, when the cell leaves the, the, the excitation point. Therefore, each pulse, each cell give, uh, generate a pulse in, for each parameter that can be detected. And each pulse has uh, different parameters, which are height, the, corresponding to the intensity of the signal, a width uh, corresponding to the time taken by the cell to generate the pulse, and an area which integrates height and width. Uh, why it is, this is important? Because this allows you to uh, separate single cells from doublets or aggregates because a doublet of cells will take a longer time to cross the laser beam and therefore um, for the same height for the same in signal intensity a doublet will have a long a, a higher width and a higher area in this way in for some application it is important to have for most application actually to uh, isolate the, the singlets and uh, by doublets can be identified by plotting area versus height. So for, for a single parameter, you not, not only uh, acquire intensity, but you can uh, acquire area and height and width, and you can plot area versus height or area versus width. And for the same area, for example, doublets have higher width and lower height. In this case, there is a, 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 some, a, an example of um, area versus height, and uh, doublets are events with uh, a higher area corresponding to for, for the same height. Uh, okay, after... Now... Next point is how are, are these uh, plots generated? For each event, okay, uh, we have seen that a cell crosses the, the laser beam and gives pulses. 
for each parameters, the system collect the, the values that we have set for, uh, for uh, scatter, for fluorescence. Each event will give a number for each parameter. Therefore, and, and then they are stored in, by the, the workstation and the software mm, collect all these data and then they are plotted. It, each point in this plot is, uh, for a, a cell, for example, identified by the coordinates, by the, the single parameter that have been uh, analyzed. In this case, x and y uh, are plotted in a bidimensional plot and uh, create the plot. The types of signals that can be analyzed are two types, scattered light and fluorescent light. <coughs> scattered light is just is the same wavelength of the excitation sort and is just a measurement of how the light is scattered by the, uh, by the cell that crosses the, the laser. And fluorescent light is the light that is the fluorescent light that is produced after the excitation. So first, light scatter. When a cell a cell crosses the, the laser beam, it scatters light in different ways. That uh, we can detect the forward scatter in the same direction of the incident light. It is we can consider it a sort of shadow a shadow cast by the, the cell to the to the detector. It's a bit more complex like this, but uh, like, like that, but uh, just to, to have a, a, an idea. Basically, the photo scatter is proportional to the cell size. The larger the cell, the higher the photo scatter. Side scatter, instead, is uh, detected in, uh, in an orthogonal way uh, than to, to to the incident light, and is a measurement of how the cell is uh, dispersed by, uh, how the light is dispersed by the cell. Uh, therefore, cells with a higher internal complexity have a, a, a larger side scatter. To make this more clear, this is the classical um, identification of uh, blood cell, uh, of blood cells by means of uh, physical parameters. You see that there are lymphocytes are smaller and have a low side scatter. Uh, granulocytes are larger than lymphocytes, therefore are more on the right. And, uh, and neutrophils, for example, have the, the same photo scatter as monocytes, the same size the same for scatter, but new, since neutrophils have uh, granules inside the cytoplasm, they have a larger uh, side scatter. So they, these populations can be identified just on the basis of uh, physical parameters by means of their internal their size on this dimension and internal complexity on this dimension. And now we go to the two fluorescence. Fluorescence is generated when uh, a substance is, uh, receives, uh, is excited by uh, excitation light, when electrons uh, are uh, taken by excitation light to an excited state and then return to, uh, to the rest state in, the, in this process emitting a fluorescent light. For this reason, since there is an excitation and uh, an emission with some loss of energy, the uh, fluorescent light is always at a shorter, um, at a, a higher wavelength than the uh, ex excitation light. Each, uh, each fluorochrome, each substance, has its own spectrum of excitation and emission. This is the spectrum of uh, excitation and the spectrum of emission. If the excitation is on the maximum of the spectrum, the fluorescent will be maximum. If the excitation is on, uh, is on the side of, of the excitation spectrum, the response will be pro uh, proportionally uh, lower. 
this is a point to keep uh, in mind when you select uh, the fluorochrons for your experiment because you must know which is your excitation line and check if uh, the fluorochrome you are using are compatible. Be sure that the, uh, your excitation line is compatible with the fluorochrome that you want to use. And uh, so, for example, this is uh, an example of uh, uh, analysis with four different fluorochrome, FITC, PE, PERCT, and APC. Each of these fluorochrome has uh, its own excitation spectrum. This is one, this is the other, this is another with two peaks, and this is another excitation spectrum. If we excite with a 640 nanometer laser, we excite only this fluorochrome, APC, which has a, 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 an excitation spectrum on, in, in the red range, which gives a fluorescence proportional to the uh, excitation light. And it is detected in the red by a, a detector at 675. If we excite with a blue laser, we get excitation of three different fluorochrome, FITC, PE, and PERCP. Each of them, they, they, have, they are excited, they are, all the three are excited by the blue light, and they have uh, emission in different ranges in the green for the FITC, in the yellow for PE, and in red for PERCP. And they, we have the, the specific detectors at 533 for FITC, 585 for PE, and 675 for uh, PERCP. What we can notice is that the emission spectrum of FITC is centered in the, the green range, but also there is a part of, of uh, fluorescent light that enters in the detectors for the PE. This creates a phenomenon which is called uh, a spectral overlap or spillover and uh, this must be taken into account when analyzing uh, uh, samples in, in more colors because they, this can result in, uh, in false uh, signals. Okay, thank you. Because to correct the spectral overlap, we need to uh, compensate the, uh, the, the, mm, the light that goes into a different channel. For example, in the, in the previous samples where we have the green light that enters in the uh, yellow detectors, if we have a samples which we know that we only, in, we only have the, 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 green, uh, the, the green fluorochrome, the FITC, if we do not compensate, it seems that it is also positive for PE. It seems double positive. With compensation, we must subtract to the PE signal a, a, a fraction of the uh, FITC signal, and to, we, we can set it to be positive only on, uh, on the uh, FITC channel. Okay, this is just an introduction. Then uh, in the next talks, you will, uh, th this will be addressed in much more uh, precise detail. So you will know the principle how to uh, select uh, a multi-parametric analysis to select the fluorochromes and to do the proper uh, compensation. Okay, once we have acquired all uh, our data, we can display in uh, many different ways. If we want uh, to analyze just one parameter, we can uh, analyze with a histogram, which uh, detects just the uh, fluorescence frequency for each, uh, the, the frequency for each fluorescence intensity. Uh, this is something that um, the, the, the beginner don't understand. This does not mean that this is uh, more intense because it's more high and this is less because it is uh, shorter. The intensity is uh, depending on the position on the, uh, on the axis. 
uh, cells coming in this region uh, in this region are more fluorescent than uh, cells in this. The, if the peak, the, the peak were different, this higher and this lower, this peak would, would uh, always be the more intense one. This is just a measure of frequency. This means that most cells are in, uh, have this kind of, this uh, in more intense fluorescent and less cells have uh, a lower fluorescence. Uh, I know that for most of you this is clear, but just to make uh, things clear for the less experienced user. Then you can analyze two parameters at a time on uh, two different uh, fluorochromes, and you, have, you detect cells which are positive for just only for one, cells which are negative, and cells positive for, for the other one. And, and uh, you can add an extra uh, dimension by uh, uh, showing where, are we, where you have the, more, the, the higher concentration of, uh, of cells. This gives a sort of uh, deepness to the, to the plot. And well, there are different ways of displaying just to, to make uh, things, uh, to, uh, to analyze different uh, aspects. Uh, ah, another possibility to display data is the B-exponential because in, in some complex uh, measurement you may have many events uh, staying very close to the, to the origin of the axis. I don't know if you can see, there are many events that stay here which are not clearly resolved, but with B-exponential display you can uh, resolve, you can um, events that fall or, uh, on or below the axis, they can be visualized and uh, increase the resolution of complex population. And, uh, okay, so, uh, as we said, you can uh, stain cells with uh, multiple markers. In this case, we can, still, uh, we can stain cells with a marker for CD3 and the marker for CD4, and we can identify cells which are negative for CD3 and CD4, cells which are positive for CD3 only, and cells which are double positive for CD3 and CD4 in a bidimensional uh, dot plot. If we have more parameters, we can take advantage of uh, the option of gating. Gating means that you can analyze cells, your, your, your distribution in, uh, on, two, uh, on, on some parameters, identify a population on the basis of some parameters, and then analyze the same cells in different parameters. In this case, we have made a gate on scatter and site scatter to identify lymphocytes to get rid of uh, granulocyte and cell debris. And these are then analyzed in, uh, by CD3 and CD4, and just, in, just the cells stained in red are then separated for CD3 and, and CD4 analysis. Uh, for example, this is, uh, the, you can apply this technique to uh, several parameters. I show you an example of how uh, a population can be identified. So, for example, these cells are first uh, analyzed by photo scatter and site scatter. We make a first gate on alive cells, but getting rid of, uh, cell, of dead cells and debris. These are then analyzed by photo scatter area versus height, uh, that was, I told you before, to uh, remove uh, uh, doublets. The, the singlets are uh, have a, 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 are usually distributed on, on a straight line, and uh, these are the doublets. Then singlets are uh, analyzed by uh, CD3, and we identify the CD3 positive. These are analyzed by CD4, and again we identify the CD4 positive. And finally, the CD4 positive are analyzed by GFP expression, and we identify a population 
which is with the population P5, which will be a, a subpopulation of P4, which will be a subpopulation of P3, which is a subpopulation of P2, and we make a, a, a so finally the, the last population will be that the population will will express GFP is CD4 positive, is CD3 positive, and is just uh, single cells. Just an example, you will see more detailed uh, examples in the next uh, talk. The last point we want to talk now is sorting. After you have identified your population, you have uh, uh, set uh, the, the your, your parameters, you have set the photomultiplier, you have set compensation, you have set everything, you have identified the cells that you want to uh, you want to purify these cells. You want to uh, have them isolated. Cells which are FITC positive, for example, and cells which are PE positive. Then you can take advantage of the sorting where, in, in a sorter, the, uh, the stream of, of cells is uh, divided in, uh, in droplets, very small droplets, which are given an electric charge and they, are, they enter an electrical field by uh, deflection plates which have uh, a high, uh, high electric charge and deflects charged drops in one side or the other to be able to, to collect them. Uh, the droplet formation is the technique that allows to isolate uh, cells, basically. The sort, the, the, the mixture of cells crosses the laser. The PMT detector detects a signal. Then the cell goes to a device which uh, is a, an oscillating device that breaks the stream in, in droplets. And if the cell corresponds to the gate that we have created, it is given a charge. Uh, if the cell will be, in this gate, will be given a positive charge, for example. If the cell is in this gate, will be given a negative charge. The time that takes from the generation of the signal to the formation of the drop is called delay. This is, uh, this in the, uh, um, in the practical part, we will see how to set the, the, the instrument to, uh, for, for the delay to have the to, to, to set the, the, the condition for the uh, sorting. So once you have set the delay, the instrument knows that when it detects a positive signal after the set delay, it will give a charge positive or negative. If the drop does not contain any cell, is not charged. If the if the drop contains a cell which does not correspond to the uh, set parameter is not given a charge. Then cells passes through the deflection uh, plates and the positive cells are deflected towards the negative plate and negative cells, uh, negative droplets in this case, are detected versus uh, the, the, the positive uh, plate and then goes to the collection point. And uh, Okay, this is the principle of sorting, which we will see in the, uh, in the practical part. Oh, there is just one more slide, just to let you know that in some instrument, and we have it in, in our instrument here at the ICGB, there is also uh, a, a device uh, called the Automatic Cell Deposition Unit, which allows to sort cells directly into, uh, into plates, into tissue culture plate from from six uh, wells to 384 wells. This is uh, uh, very useful to put cells directly in culture to minimize the, the manipulation of cells or for subcloning, if you can uh, sort a single cell in, uh, in, in single wells, so one cell per well and uh, doing subcloning. And uh, okay, that's all. So. I don't know if I have been clear enough. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask. Please. How does the frequency change the drug that is 
uh, exactly how this uh, you one need a, an electronic engineer to <laughs> to know that. However, there is a, this is an electric wire that uh, is connected to um, to the uh, to, to the string formation and uh, basically when there is a, a signal that is con that is uh, detected as uh, corresponding to the parameter set the computer send an electric pulse the, the which uh, and charges the, the 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 droplet as soon as the droplet is uh, separated from the stream so it gives an electric charge which stays there and allow the cell to be to be separated. And uh, I don't know. Perhaps we the, the company specialist can uh, <laughs> help us. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so the charge is given before the drop formation. Okay. According with your strategy of uh, sorting, uh, uh, there is an important parameter in uh, sorting, the so-called drop delay. It's the time between uh, um, the moment uh, in which the cells are analyzed, the termination point, and the moment when uh, the cells is in the drop. So this time, uh, is a, has to calculate very, very uh, correctly and with uh, action. And uh, using this parameter, the computer, uh, know when uh, the charge has to be able to spring and when uh, the sub is in the wall. So um, in, this, in, in this way, uh, we can perform very careful uh, analysis, many particularly instrument that uh, uh, the institute has in an area, and uh, it, could, it uh, may enable to have a, a multi-parametric, very uh, high-dimensional uh, analysis also, and uh, to have a, a careful sorting uh, without uh, uh, charging the sound. You remember that the charge is in the drops, not direct to the sounds. It's, uh, uh, it's differently charge to the cells can uh, produce a side effect that like, uh, as that, sorry, <laughs> in a, in a in some, uh, some study. But uh, it's correct, but uh, not so easy. So this would mean that the equipment needs to first see the fluoros the fluorescent signal, then sends to the software yes. which cell is labeled with this particular uh, fluorescent and then sends back, uh, I don't know, by electrical pulse, um, that the droplet needs to be separated with the, with the specific charge, and then yes. we get separation. Okay. Yes? How do you know what is too much voltage or too low voltage when you are setting the, the ferment, mm. or is just this Yes. One? Well, we can return to this slide. Uh, you must uh, set your the, the voltage according to be able to get the, the best uh, separation between the negative and the positive. If the voltage is too low, there can be too little separation between the negative and the, and, and the, the, the positive. In this case, you have a better separation. If the voltage is too high, you don't see the positive. You, you increase the negative and you don't see the positive. So you, the, the ideal is to find, uh, you, this you have to, to set directly on, on your sample. To, it is better to start with the, there are different philosophy. Either to start with the negative, set the negative point and then check if the, the positive is well seen or others start with the positive and set the, 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 the positive signal in the, by almost to the end of the scale to, to find it. It's something that each experiment has to be uh, determined, but the 
final objective is to get the better separation between negative and positive. Which one you should choose there, for example? Well, it is similar. I don't know if the number... In, but this is just, uh, just an example. Uh, Consider that in your this life you can, you can see this. A very bright signal. It's different when you look for cells and for biological uh, factor. In this case, you have a very different population, very separated, and like a clear negative and a clear positive. So both are optimal for identity. But you have a divide in the first situation. Maybe you can see your antigen. For example, also a CD19 in a leukemia cells, and the second one improved the resolution. So the point is the resolution. <laughs> Sorry, Marco. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, there was a question there? Yeah. The same question, okay, yes? Uh, I have a question about the dichroic mirrors. Uh, yes. The slide where you showed, and this one. Uh, I don't know much about optics, but uh, is the signal uh, degraded by the time it gets to the last detector? You uh, said that first it goes in the red uh, part of the okay. spectrum. The yeah. signal is degraded when it passes through the filter. There is, a, when, when passing through, there is some uh, absorption of light. The reflection, in, in the reflection, there is almost no uh, signal loss. In the reflection, no. So therefore, a signal that has to cross one and two filters has a, a lower quality than a signal that has just two, uh, than this one that has, is just reflected. Therefore, as I told, in a, in a system when <clears throat> there are just a few detectors, you can use a system of this kind. When you have several, uh, the signal that gets to each detector has to cross just one, one, one decroid filter and a, a bandpass filter. But all of them will have the same kind of, uh, of light absorption. So because this ensures the signal loss. Basically, when there is reflection, there is no signal loss. That is the, the, the advantage of uh, reflection optics. Yes? For doublets, you saw how to separate them. Mm -hmm. And can you give us more details or maybe in some uh, next presentation? We will see. There will be also an exercitation. Uh, Practical part, practical for, part, yeah, for cell cycle where it is very important to yeah. to define. Uh, because it seems simple what? but problem. Okay, imagine that in, in, if you are uh, analyzing cell cycle, uh, you will get a signal which is proportional to the DNA content of the cells. You want to see if the cells is a diploid or tetraploid. Of course, if you get a doublet, a doublet of diploid cells which have the, give the same si signal of a, a single tetraploid cell. Therefore, it is extremely important to identify singlets. In that case, you must uh, set uh, on, the, uh, on the channel for, that detects the, the DNA contents, you must uh, plot, I usually plot area versus width, and uh, no, there was another slide which probably I did not put in the, in the presentation, uh, where um, uh, it's a pity that we don't have that slide. No, it was, was more clear. However, uh, you must see that uh, for the same for the same area. Uh, signal with, with the same area will have a, a, a higher for the same area, um, a higher width. So uh, cells, you, you will see a distribution of uh, singlets and uh, doublets. On, on uh. I will show you during the, the the practical part. I did not put in the in this presentation because I wanted to, to show you, but. 
to use a <laughs> <laughs> We want to know as yes, many yes. as possible. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Um, I saw the range of uh, of the detection size from 0.5 micrometers. Is it possible? The size of, uh, of particles or cells. Yes. Like, uh, uh, is it possible to maybe confuse uh, my detection size based on, on, on like the debris with debris? Well, you have a different way to, to get rid of, of debris. It, uh, when measuring bacteria is difficult, in fact, because uh, there is, is more tricky. But at least for cells, you take advantage of an option called, I call it, threshold. You can set, in, uh, in, in this case, if you want to remove debris, in, you can put a threshold in a, a forward scatter. Therefore, whatever is below that threshold does not give any signal and does not uh, interfere with your analysis. <laughs> but about the threshold, uh, it seems quite hard to get it properly. For example, if you analyze apoptosis. Apoptosis, yes. Uh, or cell death. You want to see the, the want to see yes. <laughs> you have to set the threshold low, uh, in the right point according to your experiment. You will see what well, the, the control cells. Yes, you must choose, and uh, in any case, you create the first thing that you do when gating is to create a gate on. Uh, on physical parameters. So you can see, here you see that the first part of the plot is white. Here is because uh, there is a threshold that excludes cell, whatever is smaller than this, uh, debris and bacteria and whatever. Then, if you have a distribution of this kind, you know that these are alive cells and these are most probably dead or, uh, or debris. So you create a gate when you, where you decide which cells you want to to analyze further. And in the next gate, you say, show me only those in this region. So you get rid of these. 